Hi. Hi. This is Caitlin. This is Janine. Hello. And we are Lady Killers. I think we're getting better at this. Wow, that was smooth sailing. That was smooth, that that was smooth was. sailing. Oh my gosh. Watch this be like the second episode, even though we filmed it like eighth. This is the third. <laughs> We're getting better at this. We're getting better. It's like we're halfway through. He, I think that we probably should have like had a list. Oh, we have a list somewhere of the order we're gonna do. It was made on an Olive Garden. Um, like the table. I mean, not an Olive Garden, Macaroni Grill, important distinction, because they have the uh, table spreads that you write on. That, that's how it went. We, we made our whole schedule for this week of like our, our recording schedule and like, the the lineup that we wanted to do for these videos and then just on the on the table mat like the paper they put over <laughs> paper and took a picture of it and put it in google docs and that's how we're that's how we work i it's, think it's called professionalism yeah it's called you make it work it's bitch. called boss i have a murder for you today okay oh that's oh hello is that why we're here oh hello is that why we're here <laughs> i think so that's what i think that's the point i, so. I get confused because like you know our name sounds like we kill people, mm -hmm. but like we don't. We don't. It's a pun. I feel like we always have to explain that because yeah. I, I don't want y'all to think that we are like actual murderers. We're here to Despite the fact our board says murder. murder. We're not. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. This is one of the episodes of our Lady Killers series, which is specifically about lady killers, female yes. killers. I want. Um, I like. I like the self-titled. Like, yeah. I think it's our. It's our Lady Killers self-titled series. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I will tell you the story of Miss Tyler Witt. I will spell that because she is one of those people whose name, like, if you went to Starbucks, they'd have to ask like eighty times how to spell it. Like and, my name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's T Y L A. R? Tyler. 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 Okay. Wit. W I T T. T T. Cool. Cool. So she is a 14 year old high school freshman at Oak Ridge High School in El Dorado Hills, oh. California. No, there's an Oak Ridge near us. Okay, yeah. yeah. So a town, a few towns over, it's called Oak Ridge North. I was like, no. Like, oh. no, this is in California. Okay. This is set in 2009. El Dorado Hills in California is a really wealthy district. Okay. Um, but she was raised by a single mother who was like doing the best she could and like put her in El Dorado because they had a really good school district, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Tyler had significant issues with her mother, Joanne Witt, and Tyler's father was completely out of the picture. When Tyler was just five years old, um, Joanne and Tyler were riding in a car. Tyler was screaming and crying as five-year-olds do. And Joanne was, like, super stressed. She's, like, a single mom. She's been working all day. She just picked her kid up from daycare. Like, she's, like, she can't handle it. Um, and she lashes out at Tyler and hits her. Okay. Which is not okay. Um, people saw the mark on Tyler's cheek. Um, and someone called CPS on Joanne. Uh, and that's Child Protective Services. Um, they'll come and take your children away or investigate an issue. Um, if there's child abuse or child neglect, whatever. Tyler was then taken from Joanne's custody for a prolonged period of time. Tyler was then given to Joanne's parents for a bit, so Tyler's grandparents, while Joanne underwent anger management training and learned how to properly deal with her frustration. Eventually, it was ruled that Tyler could go back into Joanne's custody. So Joanne, like, gets over her issues. She learns how to deal with aggression. She's like a single mom. She's stressed. That's not an excuse for it's child okay. abuse, but it's like... I don't think she it's not a bad through person it. thing. She like, worked through yeah. it. She is under monitoring and it's better that child be with their mother yeah and the child and the mom learn to not be abusive right i think this was an instance where it was lack of resources and lack of support and she sense. felt alone and angry and stressed yeah and lashes out and also as far as we know it was a one-time incident that just okay. was pretty brutal but um after tyler was released in joanne's custody joanne felt very nervous to discipline tyler like ever okay um, out of fear that Tyler would be taken away once more. She loved her daughter so, 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 so much. That makes sense. But the result of that is Tyler begins thinking she can get away with anything. Okay. Because <laughs> she's like, oh, my mom never punishes me. Right. I, and if I do, I'm going to threaten CPS on my mom. So that's what mm. she did all growing up. Like, her mom okay. would yell at her over, like, staying out too late, and Tyler would be like, I'm calling CPS. So it's like, oh, no. So Tyler meets Stephen Culver at the Habit Coffee Shop on jo in January 2009. It's Culver. 
Yeah, let's go. I wonder if it's still open. Let's go there. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. It's let's edgy, do it. edgy, edgy. So she meets Steven, and it's love at first sight. But Steven's 19, um, and she's 14 years old. I saw that coming. That's illegal. <laughs> so they were both in the same social scene. Tyler and Steven both really liked anime. Same. I and, mean. And goth clothing. I mean. Same. Me? And the macabre. Same. same. Tyler often engaged in self-harming behaviors, like cutting, and was really active on MySpace, even though it was 2009, and who is active on MySpace still? Was that, that is a literal note I wrote, because Was I that remember. not a still a, a MySpace time, though? It was, but it was only for, like, scene and, like, those kids. Like, Facebook had already kicked off by 2009. Okay. MySpace was still kind of going okay, but Facebook had already come into the scene, okay. so, and Facebook had stopped just being a college student website. Okay. By that point. So it was like okay. surpassing my space already. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. One problem with Tyler and Steven, as I already said, Steven was a freshman in college and Ooh. Tyler was a freshman in high school. Uh, he attended Folsom Lake College in the neighboring town of Folsom, but like Steven and Tyler were inseparable. So, um, this close relationship is attributed by Tyler to Joanne's drinking habit, even though the prosecution has largely deemed Joanne to not be an alcoholic by any means. Like, when this came to trial, people were like, there is no evidence that no. she had a drinking problem. But, like, Tyler was like, my mom was guzzling it down. It's like, no, your mom was not. Whereas no. the evidence of that, you're just trying to ruin your mom. As, yeah. Like, you're trying to discredit. Yeah. Uh, your mother. Um, in March 2009, the two began sleeping together. This, of course, would qualify as statutory yeah. rape. Mm -hmm. Prosecutors in the case have stated that this would likely result in a misdemeanor offense because the age difference isn't massive. Stephen Culver eventually moves into the Witt home with Joanne's permission. He's paying only about $500 in rent, which helps the family because she's a single mom. And he's also tutoring Tyler in math because Culver wants to be a high school math teacher. That's what he's going for college for. Tyler claims that Stephen is gay to get uh, Joanne to agree. Of course, Stephen is not gay. No. <laughs> and they keep hooking up. Right. One day, Joanne catches them. Um... Steven is hiding in Tyler's closet naked. Um, Joanne also finds Tyler's journal, which details all the sexual stuff right. Tyler and Steven have been getting into because, like, no one has watched, like, true crime things and knows, like, don't journal anything. Like, no. why would you keep a journal? But do because then you But get also caught. do because then we have evidence, but I'm also just like, you're dumb. Detailing, like, sexual acts they do with their boyfriend, like, in their journal. There are things I don't want to remember out, like, yeah. right? Like, I don't know. Like, why would I write this for my future self? Because that's allegedly what you're going to do when you fan journal. Fiction? Yeah, like, am I fanficting myself? <laughs> like, am I like, and then Tyler gets up. Yeah. And, like, what are you doing? Anyway, yeah. you're 14. Like, True. get a white Wattpad. Um, <laughs> like the rest of us did when we were 14. <laughs> right about morning. Brendan Yuri making <laughs> out with you. I have one direction. Dude. Dude. There's so many One Direction fanfics on Wattpad. Oh, no. My favorite ones are like, One Direction kidnapped me. And I'm like, why are you glorifying that's a, kidnapping? That's a thing. We all grew up reading fanfiction from yes. time to time. Like, we yes. all did. Don't I lie still, to No, like, like, I still sometimes did. will when I'm really bored at night go to, like, the werewolf section of, like, Wattpad and be, like, mentally just, like, knowing that this is misogynistic bullshit, but then also, like, somewhere deep part of me is, like, where's my alpha wolf? I am such a sucker for those just, stu like, Twilight. Oh. Like, I went through a Twilight I phase, love Twilight. And it's it's just, like, I'm, I'm a sucker for that, just, like, this is disgusting and cheesy and awful, but, like... I indulge oh, in it. Right. You know? <laughs> I'm like, I need this now. And, like, people talk so much smack about that, but I'm like, literally, it's just the Harlequin romance novels yeah. of young girls. Yeah. And I'm like, they're not quality. No one's pretending they're quality. No. Like, but it's, it, it is something to indulge in. You know, it's like, like it's like a, what is a, a, a guilty pleasure. It's novel I reading. Say. Yeah. As they would say in the 1800s. I'm not going to, like, Start quoting Twilight like I did whenever I was eleven. I'm not I gonna loved lie. Him over the yeah, but it's like you know, it's kind of fun. It's kind of yeah. fun. No, it's kind of fun. fun. Anywho, <laughs> so at this point, Joanne uh, knows that they're having like this affair and kicks Stephen out and says that Tyler cannot see Stephen any longer because statutory rape and lying and all decent reasons for a child not actually, to see illegal. a grown man any longer. It's illegal. Well, and she's like, I. She's being a nice guy actually. She's like, I'm not gonna press charges against you because it's not that big of an age gap. Like, it's not like he's a 50-year-old man. Yeah. She's like, I get it, you're a 
dumb teen still. 19 yeah. is still a teenager, even though you're a legal adult. Yeah. It's like, I'm sure she was like, I'll give you a break. Leave my kid alone, though. Yeah. And, like, I get it. There's weird lines there. But it was consensual sex mm-hmm. with the... Kids, yeah. Da, 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 because power differentials was a consensual, I know, gross. But still, like, the mom, I think, is, like... It's, like, it's not just, completely his fault. It's, yeah. It is kind of her fault, too. It's, like... Not her fault. It's Tyler's fault yeah. as well. So. Yeah. No, and it's, like, it's complicated. I think we can all agree there is some weird, muddy... It still should be illegal, but there's, like, a muddiness here. Yeah. No, I understand. Um, so, uh, Joanne's male friends have to, um, come help move Steven because he's, like, resisting. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, insert a photo of Joanne and Steven and, uh, Tyler ding, here. Ding, ding, There's ding, a lot of ding, ding. Joanne <laughs> photo of them being in love. There's some good photo booth photos. So, like, the next stage is that Joanne threatens to turn in Tyler's journal as evidence the police regarding statutory rape. Um, to just clarify, California law regarding stat rape... Um, is that Stephen is more than three years older than Tyler, so he would be charged with a misdemeanor or felony rape charge. It's a wobbler. So even the state recognizes that it's a gray area. Also, I, it's a hard topic. Age of consent in Texas, I want to say, is within like four years of, like if like if they're under eighteen, it's the Romeo and, and Juliet 18, clause. It's, it's like three years. It's like three years. Yeah, okay, it's three years right. because it's the age difference between Romeo and Juliet. Because oh, she was really yeah. Because so okay. she's fourteen and he's seventeen years old, so mm-hmm. it's three years. Okay. So at worst, he could be charged with a felony, around two to three years in county jail, which could be reduced, and a maximum ten thousand dollar fine. Um, he might also have to be registered as a sex offender. Okay. That is the worst case, and this is according to. Um, one of the prosecutors in this case said likely and best case is it's a misdemeanor, which would have resulted in a year max at county jail, and it could be way less than that. Okay. And a maximum $1,000 fine. Steven had no prior record and is not that much older than Tyler, so pretty much everyone agreed it would have been a low misdemeanor with probably no jail time. But <laughs> Tyler and Steven think Steven is going to jail for the rest of his life because they're stupid. <laughs> um, because they have no conception of the legal system and also did not do any basic research, even though the internet super fucking existed and they could have. Yeah. Uh, they're just really dumb. They hatched this plan that they're going to kill Tyler's mom, Joanne. Um, and then after, they plan to kill themselves because they want revenge against Joanne, but they know Stephen's going to go to jail. So on June 12th, 2009, Joanne was found stabbed to death in her California home. According to Tyler's testimony, she waited, uh, Tyler waited outside the room as Stephen stabbed Joanne 20 times, which is massive overkill. Yeah. She had, uh, and this is like just a really sad moment of irony um joanne had a book on her nightstand which was um about dealing with your troubled teenager which is just really sad needless to say tyler and her mom have a very conflicting relationship and joanne tried her best yeah and tyler shows a lot of suggestions of being kind of sociopathic okay yeah. And definitely a liar. The pair then flee to San Francisco and head to a Holiday Inn. There they hope to consume rat poison in order to kill themselves. They did consume rat poison, but they were unsuccessful. They dyed their hair black. They both have blonde hair, and it looks horrible. Insert photos here. They look really stupid. It's, like, green. It's bad. Oh, you know that's, good, how, that's how it goes. Yeah, it's yeah. so gross, because they tried to go black from, like, blonde. Like, my, like, no, yeah. this blonde. Because black is not purely black. It's a darkened color of yeah. something, and it's usually, like, a green tone, if you, especially yeah. if you're using box dye. Yeah, and it was totally box dye. Yeah, I, I'm not a professional, <laughs> but I do know with blacks get really weird. Yeah, no, so they just look super so, muddy and gross. That's and it's disgusting. So awful. Anyway, so after six days of running, uh, Tyler and Stephen were found hiding behind a dumpster in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> On June 17th, 2009, the pair were caught. Um, during their questioning, Stephen constantly asks about Tyler and is concerned about her. Mm-hmm. Tyler eerily pretends she has no idea her mother is dead. With the cops, they keep being like, you know why you're here. And she's just like, no. And they're like, your mom's dead. And she goes, what? What? And then eventually, like, literally maybe an hour later, she admits to knowing that her mother is dead. Steven notably has no violent history, whereas Tyler actually does. Right. Um, in her journal, she made multiple statements about wanting to kill her mother. Um, to friends, she joked about wanting to kill her mother. 
Um, further, there had been a 911 call in which Tyler and her mother were fighting. Tyler's mother actually received a cut on her chin. That's like pretty deep. Tyler then calls the cops and pretends to be her mother, stating she wants uh, the cops to come and pick Tyler up. Um, Tyler just wants to leave her mother so badly and she wants to be returned to CPS. Um, and her mom eventually gets on the phone and is like, yeah, please come out. Like, I guess, because she's like, I'm, I think my daughter's going to kill me. Steven's mom strongly believes that he should be in jail, but also kind of felt like he had been manipulated and that it was really I Tyler. Was just, I was just thinking that. That was the one to blame in this situation. I mean, it, it's kind of weird. Like, if you're 19 and you're wanting to date a 14-year-old, like, that's kind of weird in itself, but it's not kill someone's mom sociopathic crazy. Well, and then she also takes this sociopathic twist. So Steven is, like, defending her and, like, asking if she's okay right. and, like, checking in on her. Tyler is offered a plea bargain and says she'll testify against him um, if she gets a reduced sentence. So Steven is sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. <gasps> Tyler oh. Witt was only given 15 years. Oh, my God. But she, she was tried as an adult. It. She was tried as an adult, Yeah. But she only gets 15 years. She claims that she wasn't there when she stabbed her mom. Like, for instance, Tyler was in the room next door just yeah. covering her ears, claiming that she was singing la 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 to herself. It's like you're still involved in that yeah. murder. I think this was more dumb, mildly eh, criminal guy who was probably not going to commit a violent crime like this. He had no record of committing right. violent crimes or violent actions in high school. He was really liked mm -hmm. and, like, really never acted out, which is really unusual with, like, right. people that become murder. Like, if you're going to murder, you normally act out. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't really have a history of that. His mom was adamant that there was, like, really nothing in his background that would suggest that he would be violent leader. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like... Tyler had a history of violence. She's a smart girl who I think was manipulative. I think, okay, and yeah, she approached this because she wanted her mother dead. Like, I think she wanted her mom to die. It's just, it's so angsty. I wonder what made her so angsty. I think it's just sociopathic. Like, I think it was just her mom was trying to lock down on her suddenly and be like, you can't do things you can't because she's like, I, I realize my child's out of control because of yeah. stuff she, like, I let her get away with so much when she was younger. And I think Joanne kind of had this realization, like, I have to crack down now or it's never going yeah. to change. And I want my daughter to be able to be a productive member of society. And then Tyler rebelled against that. And something that's also really sad from a documentary I was watching, um, Tyler's grandparents now choose not to have anything to do with her because they're like, you killed our daughter. Yeah. And they're very much like, our granddaughter is, as far as we're concerned, dead. And I'm like, that's understandable, but they're really... That's heartbreaking. In this, this the surviving victims, I, I think, really are Tyler's grandparents who not only lost a daughter, but lost a granddaughter that day. It's heartbreaking. It's really sad. She's just literally the epitome of an out-of-control teen plus sociopathic tendencies. Right. Because she literally lied to the police, plus like, multiple a times. a 19-year-old boy who's at her disposal. Who like, like, is <laughs> already showing signs of being kind of a creep. Yeah. And kind of, mm, like, not yeah. being the greatest, but has no violent tendencies, but seems hopelessly in love with her. Right. And I, I do think she, like, Could a lot of sociopaths of manipulated yeah. him. Um, I think at the end of the day, she didn't, as it shows in this, it didn't really care about him, but cared a lot about the fact that she wanted her mother dead. Yeah. Was there any more after that? That's or literally that it. it. She gets out oh, damn. in like... Oh, is she so out this, now? No, it was in 2009, so I think she's up in 2024. It might be mm. later than that, but I watched the documentary a month ago. So. I wonder I wonder how she's doing. I don't know. If and I not care. in like a concerned yeah. way, but I wonder, like, in, in the way that like when she's released, how is she doing? I, I know about a year ago, you know? her grandpa visited her for the first time. Her grandmother had visited her before, but her grandfather was the most adamant that he wanted nothing to do with her. And I think they're trying to have a pseudo relationship, but I don't think it's working. I mean, and I don't think they really want one as I kind of sympathize with. I, I don't think I'd want one with my... I It makes me wonder that if she hadn't like killed her mom at that time if she had grown out of that angsty teen phase if she would have been more normal do you know what i yeah, mean yeah i don't know because whenever whenever you're like 14 and you're angsty like every every kid thinks that they're being like 
their parents are out to get them kind of thing. Yeah, but I'm hesitant to call this just angst. No, I think this is no, you're sociopathic. Right. It's sociopathic. But because, I, like, angsty kids hate their parents all the time and they just do drugs. Yeah. Like, I just, it makes me wonder if, like, she would have, like... I mean, because... People with sociopathic tendencies can also live, live normal life. lives. Yeah, like they can live completely Many normal lives. Many sociopaths are like functioning members of society. Yeah. So you wouldn't even know they're a sociopath. It like, makes me wonder if she would have like grown out of that. Maybe. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. Or I think it was just a toxic a, like, combination, and also parenting that was really permissive mm -hmm. because she was scared. Like I, I don't think yeah. it was Joanne's fault by any means. I think she was trying her best to be a good mom. Was too lenient. Tried to go back on it, and I think it ended up resulting in her life being taken yeah. away by a selfish, entitled child. So this is maybe interesting that people that are children that commit murders early in life are actually really unlikely to commit them later. Mm -hmm. There was a girl in Canada who killed her entire family, and she walks free now. Um, I forget her name, Jasmine something. But, like, she walks free now, um, totally free, changed her name, um, went to university and has not committed a crime since. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not saying that those people should ever walk free, but I do think that, like, you're kind of right in the idea that psychology does seem to suggest that you do grow out of it. Yeah. It's just, wow, what a lethal way to use your angst and what a yeah. horrible, horrible... Yeah. Because there's, I mean, there's serial killers where, like, just off the top of my head, like, the Zodiac Killer, like, it's obvious. You're never going to grow he, out He literally, like, yeah. sees humans prey, like... But there's some where it's, like... Crimes of passion or crimes of angst, if you will, yeah. you know, like, but is, is it just kind of like a really bad combination of angst, of hormones, of life isn't fair, mom, and then yeah. of like sociopathic tendencies or like the media and entitlement and that just kind of like... You know, do you know what I'm, do you know what I'm no, kind of I going totally for? Get, yeah, no, I think it's like, um, it's, it's just a toxic blend of yeah. things that happen to you when you're a teen. And yeah, things are changing, your frontal lobe, your decision making, like cortex and, and stuff like and that not is that not fully making, function. Oh, there's no There's excuse. no excuses. We're not there's making no excuse. any kind of excuses. She should we're be, just, I genuinely think, in prison for the rest of her life. But yeah. like... It, I just, I really like looking at different perspectives think, when it yeah. comes to cases like this, whenever there's some kind of weird like psychology behind it where you're just like could they have grown up yeah it? and I like, like over we'll things. find out like she is getting mm. released um there's no je double jeopardy so that's the end of it she will be released and never held for that crime again mm. so i mean we'll find out like if yeah. she grows out of it she kills again if she commits any crimes again like well, no. so you said 2028 2024 20 2024? it's something like that she got um it the Trial happened in, I want to say 2012, and she got 14 years. 2026. 2026. So, in what, eight to nine something years, whenever that happens? By the end of the decade. If we're still yeah. making videos, we will do an. We'll update. tell you about her. <laughs> yeah. We'll let you know if she became a decent yeah. member of society. The sad thing is with the guy, um, I think he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life, too. Um, but I'm also like, he doesn't get the same opportunity and it, it, that does feel kind of weird that it's yeah. like you both commit the same crime essentially. Yeah. And one person gets 14 years. I mean, I would arguably say that like, she's more responsible than he of was. it than he yeah. was. Though he but did she the, did the, he did the actual stabbing. Yeah. So. He did do the actual stabbing, but like, uh, I, I, but also that's like according to them it. and they were the only ones there. So who... You're right. And there's a lot of people, because it is overkill, that question the argument that um, Stephen was the one that actually stabbed I was just mom. about to say that... Overkill is really unusual unless it's, like, a true crime of passion. But Stephen did know Joanne. Yeah, so. and if he was as in love with her as it as it seems, I mean, it's possible he could have taken the brunt of it for It her. seems as if he wanted to. Yeah. So I, I know there's a lot of, like, I know Stephen's parents, for instance, um, and they would, but they question the f idea that mm -hmm. Stephen was the one that stabbed. It's interesting. Uh, it's just, like, it, we're just looking at it from different perspectives, like, how it, it's like... a confusing case. I mean, there's no way you could know. there's no witnesses. Like, it's yeah. just them, and we have to take them at their word for yeah. it on, like, what happened, but yeah. at the end of the day, like, we don't know, mm -mm. and the forensics don't really indicate anything, so. Yeah, 
That was really interesting. I, I like these like kind of deep ones. I, I love a good like 1800s one whenever it's just kind yeah. of like these crazy hooligans like just kill hooligan. people. But it's all very like timeline. And also you know? it's so behind us. Yeah. It's easy to not humanize those cases yeah. and be like... They, they tend to be a, a smidge more goofy, like Marie Manning, like she orders a bunch of limes and, sho- and a it's shovel. Like, and it's just kind of, it's kind of funny in those ways. And I love talking about those, but these make for a good conversation. That's, it's a, that's a rough story. That's yeah. good though. Thank it's you. good. That's really interesting. I like that the child murderers, like you're a child and you're killing someone. Yeah, like I think it's I always really I really wanted one that was like mm-hmm. underaged. I was like, they were always bizarre. Yeah. The other one I was looking at is Alyssa Bustamante mm-hmm. and I'm going to check her out. At some point, because she was um, part of the Satan scare. Snaps. Which <laughs> like the Satan, the Satanism scare was interesting. Ooh, so. okay. Well, you, you killed it. I almost Thanks. forgot about that I know. tagline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there we go. So we are Lady Killers, and this is our self-titled series. Subtitled. And, and if you enjoyed it, you should like us. You should subscribe to us. You should hit that bell notification icon so that you get updates whenever we post an episode. You should also follow us on all of our social media that will be here or down there. Who knows? We're guessing too. It's- <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. We are just pretending. <laughs> Make believe adults. <laughs> also leave a comment below. If you feel it, email us if you have any suggestions for murders we should do or, or any series. Guys. Yeah, if you like some paranormal. If I'd love to do some paranormal. I'd love to do some folklore. We do anything that goes bump in the night. So Maybe give it creepy. to us. Mm-hmm. Give, give it to us. Okay, thanks. Bye. bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>